Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam ma ba'a habita fillah from the benefits of Imam bin Baz rahmatul alayhi wa rahmatin wasiya is a fantastic piece of advice and if we did this we would probably have so much less fitna in our communities so much so much less controversy between Ahlul Sunnah and even with Ahlul Bid'ah we would be able to deal with issues based on ilm and fiqh and, and deal with those matters that concern us. Because it's not for the basic student of knowledge and not for everyone just to get into issues of takfir and tabdir and tafsik, of calling people kafirs and calling people innovators and calling people wicked facets. But if we took this beneficial advice, we would raise our status with Allah Azza wa Jal. And this is fantastic, simple advice. And the ulama have said it countless times. And we've read it from the cell of how many times. But the people, subhanAllah, they just can't seem to, uh, to, 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 to implement these things and avoid controversy, wickedness, sinfulness, and delving into matters that do not concern them. Imam bin Baz... Uh, he said these fantastic words. He said, The great Imam said, And this is in accordance with the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He says, whoever takes care of his time by doing dhikr, remembrance of Allah, reciting the Quran, accompanying the good people, and distancing himself from the ignorant and bad company will purify and soften his heart. SubhanAllah. So if you want success to purify your heart, make kathrata adhkar, dhikr. This is one of the greatest things you can do in this life. The second thing the Imam mentioned, of course, reciting the Quran. This is the highest form of dhikr. The third thing he said, accompany good pe people. Husna suhbah, righteous companionship. Associate only with good people who remind you of Allah, who are not going to get you involved in controversy, getting you involved in hatred between Muslims, hatred between the people. Uh, uh, violence and extremism. La, you want to be around Ahlul Khair and good who remind you of Allah Azza wa Jal. The next point he mentioned is distancing, distancing yourself from the ignorant and bad company. So by pr putting a barrier between those people who have no benefit, those people who only backbite, who only spread namima, who only want to see wickedness, who only blind follow people, who only are arrogant, who only curse people, who only have the worst manners, who only are jahil about the sharia, then you won't have any benefit from them. But if you distance yourself from them, then this is a way to keep your heart soft and pure. Because what you find, and I think we many of us have experienced this through practice and experience, that when you put yourself in an environment with bad company, what, is the, what does it produce? You feel bad. You feel, don't you feel bad when you're trying to be on Iman and the people around you are backbiting? Sometimes for us that have non-Muslim relatives, we're around our non-Muslim relatives or whatever, and their manners are different than the manners you've come accustomed to when you have good company. Me, I try to be around good, the, my, the brothers I, I'm with are the closest ones, they remind me of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even if we're at the gym, we're talking, you know, we're some adhkar, or we're talking about an Islamic mas'ala. If we're going out hiking, camping, whatever the case may be, we're in the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, at least some of that time. We're reminding each other of good. But when you're around other people, and all they do, they, they curse, you hear them cursing. You hear them, and you don't even curse, and none of your companions even swear. You feel dark in your heart. You feel it. You literally can feel it. You don't feel like, you know, I should really be hanging out in this environment very long. 
or you hear that all you hear out of their tongue is they're backbiting someone. The person that is with you in the company with them, and then they leave, as soon as they leave, you hear them say, huh, so-and-so is like this. Huh, they need to get their life together because they're like this. Huh, they are uh, such and such. All is an instant backbiting with no reservation. And that begins to rub off on you. You know, either you will be a part of khair or you'll be a part of sharm. That dawa, one way or another, will affect you. So being around good company will benefit you. Likewise, if you go to even students of knowledge or people who have studied or people in your community and the only thing you get from those people is a bad taste, is is speaking about others. You don't get any benefit. They haven't helped you raise your iman. They didn't give you any iman boosters. They didn't teach you anything. Then that's a, 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 a clear indication for you that you're in the wrong community. That you need to search out. Those people are calling the kitab ila wa sunnah to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and teaching and preaching to the people khair and goodness. But not preach, preaching to the people shar and pointing them out to shar. As the Prophet ﷺ said in the hadith about the husn al sahba the righteous companions. A righteous companion is like misk. When you, when you greet them and when you leave them, they've left a good smell with you. What is that good smell? They've left some ilm with you. They've left some uh, 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 good benefits with you. They left you in the remembrance of Allah. They made you think. They made you, they give you something positive. They made you feel good. And the wicked sitting and the wicked companion is the one that when they leave is like they, they are like the iron worker. They're still dust and soot and uh, the burnt smell of the iron and, and, and maybe burn, burns in your clothing. What is this burning in the clothing? What is this foul smell they've left with you? This is the backbiting, the ghiba, and the namima, and the wicked behavior, the wicked akhlaq and manners that left behind you. The distorted principles that are principles of Ahl al at least from Ahl sunnah Those principles of ta'asab that you have to be with us and you can't be... We saw you at this masjid. The principle of when you come into our masjid, we have to frown and check you and make empty hand of you when you're just coming to worship Allah Azza wa Jal. Those kind of principles. That, that take from the heart, that make you not want to go back to that place, that make you not want to sit with those people, then you know that that's a place that you don't want to be because it'll, it'll be against your fitna. So strive your best to be with good company and strive your best to make adhkar and dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and strive your best to do talib al-ilm to remind you and, and recite the Quran and contemplate the Quran and learn the meaning of the Quran and this comes from the jal jal jalsat uh, of Ahl al-Ilm. So try to be in those circles of knowledge. And if you can't travel to be in circles of knowledge or they're not in your locality, then use these, these uh, paths of the internet and other things to listen to those who are going to bring you closer to Allah. Listen to those people who are known by the ulama. Listen to those people who quote from the ulama, who quote from Kitab Allah wa Sunnah to Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the understanding of the Salaf and they help you to feel better about your Iman and they bring you closer to Allah Azza wa Jal and they're on the book and the Sunnah and we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil anything that I said was incorrect was for myself and anything that I said that was good was from Allah Azza wa Jal wa Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam ala Nabiina Muhammad wa ala Alaihi wa Sahbihi wa Sallam